So what have we actually got inside our model? Let's bring back this earlier diagram. It makes clear that we want to put stuff into the model and get stuff out. Let's use that basic idea to guide a quick tour. So the information we want to put into this model is entered in this dedicated worksheet called inputs calc. So let's look inside there. Here you see we have several important items available to us, including the amount we're going to spend each month once we're operating. Um, the total token supply is entered here. The names of our allocations are here. And we also have the uh, round size and token prices um, of each of these investment rounds, which contain the tokens that are sold to investors. And we also have vesting terms for all of these other allocations, um, including the investor allocations as well. Let me just create some space here by packing this region up. And you see that we also have some spark lines here that give us instant visual feedback on the outline of each of our vesting schedules per the terms that we've been entering into our model. Uh, this allows us to get a quick view of them at a glance and the red highlights the end point, the point at which tokens are no longer accumulating for each allocation. So that gives us a quick instant view of which allocations take longer to vest and which ones vest sooner. This model also helps us to stay on track by giving us automatic visual alerts when it detects that something isn't quite right. Say, for example, when we're not raising enough. So for example, I can lower the amount we raise in our private round here to 100,000. And you'll see this red light has turned on here to immediately alert us to the fact that we are not meeting our required fundraise target. These alerts are actually set up to pick up on lots of common errors to help you out. Now it's time to think about the information that we get out of the model. The outputs, which are mostly contained in this worksheet that we've called outputs. So let's click on in there. Now you'll notice that the data on this page has been given a narrow vertical layout. That's a deliberate choice because it helps us to be able to take a view of the output data and the input sheet at the same time. So we can change our inputs and see the results update on the right. And we also get this added flexibility. So you can see I'm scrolling up and down on the left here, and that's not changing what I see on the right, and I can change what I look at on the right, and nothing's changing on the left. So um, helpful flexibility to speed up your working and avoid you having to click between different views all the time. But right now, we want to focus on the outputs page. So let's bring that into full view and zoom in a little bit. So we have all kinds of interesting stuff here. The total sum raised, the number of months of funded runway, the share of tokens that we've sold off for external capital, fully diluted valuations for the lowest and highest rounds, um, metrics that help us understand how that valuation changes over the course of the different investment rounds. We can accommodate different initial market cap concepts here, something I'll talk about in detail later. And we also have the total vesting period reported for our token supply and measures of how that supply gradually unlocks over time. So we have lots of numbers here, but how do we make sense of them? I mean, are they big? Are they small? To help answer that, we place the metrics of our deal on a football field chart like the one you see here. And what this does is it compares the metrics for our deal to the average values and spread of these values that we see in the market for comparable deals. So a red dot here represents one of our model values and the blue triangle represents the average values, okay? So if we have a red dot near the top of one of the bars here, that tells us that this metric in our deal is high relative to peers in the market. And conversely, if we see a red dot that's at the low end, that tells us that this metric is at the low end compared to peers in the market. This chart is really useful to help flag any attributes of our offer or deal which are out of line with what's currently going on in the market so that we can choose whether we want to correct it or whether we need to prepare our negotiators to be ready to defend this difference when they are quizzed on it by prospective investors. 
Scrolling further down, we have our famous allocation and distribution charts, including the vesting schedules that you can see here. These feature prominently in public documentation shared with the public and investors. But we also have this disclosures worksheet, which sifts through all of that output data and selects the key items that we see being used in public documentation shared with retail and investors. And all of this data, as you can see, has been pre-formatted and laid out so that it's really easy for you to just copy and paste into your uh, documents as you update the terms of the deal. But what's really neat here is that all this data is live and that comes in super handy, especially when you're dealing with the vesting table here, which you can see, let me zoom in a little bit, uh, you can see contains a lot of text, but if we go into the inputs tab and make a change, we can see the table instantly updates. We now have 50% unlocked at listing. So that saves us a lot of time your um, graphic editors can just come here, copy the text, update it in their documents, and everybody's saving time. It's just so much easier to work with. And that completes our introductory tour of this model. We'll be looking at all the details of how this works very shortly, but before we do that, it's important to tell you about something that you may have been looking out for, but that definitely is not found in this model. We'll focus in on what that is and help you understand why it's missing.